unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Coming to your live box and ego unpack. Yeah. We unpack. We unpack. We unpack. Canelo Alvarez double backs and switch up. Previously, he said that he wasn't interested in the Gennady Golovkin. Hey, no, guys, hey, Max. He said Golovkin has nothing to offer him. Oh, how those stories have changed. I'm about to talk about all that more in this video. What up, Fight World? It's your boy, Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Now, make sure you guys come in and smash the like button. My name is Ego. I'm your host. I've been covering boxing for double digit years. And this is my original segment, often imitated, but never duplicated. Unpack where I take a deep dive and unpack the issues in boxing, the storylines, the topics that you want to hear. Now, Canelo has a fight with Dimitri Bevo. We'll see how tough or easy that fight proves to be. At 175, in my opinion, um, I just don't think it's a big fight. I also don't think that Dimitri Bevo has looked particularly good in his recent fights. But if the best version of uh, Bevo shows up, maybe there's some excitement in the fight. Canelo moving back up to 175, where he scored a KO knockout over another Russian fighter, Sergey. Kovalev and that fight to me was FAF now this fight he has to get past it but beyond that he's been asked about his next plans because it's been heavily rumored that Canelo hey pay they get the f out of here my night pay they you won't pay they right and it's been rumored that Canelo Alvarez has planned two fights for sure with the zone possibly a third fight the downside to this and i've talked about this earlier in a previous video which is why you guys gotta subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest canelo alvarez you know let me just show you i can show you but i could tell you i made this graphic canelo his 13th fight since 2016 is dimitri bevo and you guys will see, I made basically a legend. So you guys can see since 2016, when the T-Mobile Arena, this was the first boxing fight. Canelo was the first boxing fight at the T-Mobile Arena. And the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas isn't even the newest arena on the strip. Allegiant Stadium has been built. So I just want to put it in perspective that when Canelo fought Amir Khan, in 2016, I was there. That was the first fight in boxing at the T-Mobile Arena. But since then, the Raiders have left my backyard, Oakland, and um, traveled to Las Vegas. It's been some time. So this is his 13th fight. And just so you guys see, with this illustration, I put the flag of the, the place of origin where each opponent that he's fought since that Amir Khan fight all the way up to now is from. <clears throat> so Bevo Russian, his last opponent, Caleb Plant, Caucasian American fighter. You see this fight was Billy Joe Saunders, English fighter. Then before he fought Avni Yildrim coming off of a two year layoff and a loss to Anthony Durrell. He's a Turkish fighter. Then you'll see he fought Caleb Smith, another English-British fighter. Then you'll see he fought Kovalev, who was in mid to late 30s and had been stopped before multiple times by Andre Ward and Elita Alvarez and was on the back half of his career. Almost got knocked out by Anthony Yard and was on a quick turnaround, right? And then you see right here, he fought Danny Jacobs of New York, who gave Triple G issue. I thought he actually beat Triple G when they fought. Jacobs is the second American fighter that Canelo has fought since. Well, he was the first. And Caleb Plant was the second. 
But basically, he's fought two American fighters since 2016. Ain't that something, y'all? And that's why I made this graphic so you guys can see. Before Jacobs, he fought another British fighter, right? Rocky Fielding. He fought Golovkin twice, failed a drug test in between here. Golovkin being from Kazakhstan. He fought Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., who struggled with weight and looked weight drained. And then he fought another English-British fighter, Liam Smith. And then he fought another English fighter, Amir Khan. And he knocked both of them out. So there hasn't been much variety and diversity in Canelo's opponent. And, and I guess you could say the common denominator is in his last 13 fights, only two of them are American made. Two. So make sure you guys follow me on Twitter at Boxing Ego so you guys can see that. Now, it leads to the topic of this video, his fight with Golovkin. In my opinion, I, I, I just don't fancy the fight at this particular time. You know, I think when Canelo first joined the zone and Golovkin followed him and joined the zone, that's when they should have made the fight. Seeing how, for whatever reason, see Canelo, I think Canelo's a diva. And I've said that multiple times. So at the end of the day, he, he seemed like he had butted heads with Oscar De La Hoya towards the end. And he wanted to get away from them. Even though he included DAZN in the lawsuit, he wanted to get from under Golden Boy and have Oscar De La Hoya not profit off him anymore and make money off of his name and his fights anymore. But you see Canelo outside of the one Caleb Plant fight, he ran back to DAZN and that's where he's been since that point, right? So since he's been fighting on DAZN, I think... The, the time, the ship has sailed. The time to fight Triple G, they should have already fought by now. I truly believe this. I think they truly should have fought. Now, shout out to longtime subscriber Kamal Oz. Uh, we talked behind the scenes. He, he slid in the DM and he got on my case and told me I had to make this video because one point that, see, this is the thing with me when it comes to this boxing game is... There's a lot of people, my memory is great, and there's a lot of people that they want to, they they listen to the message, they hear what I have to say, and if they're fanatical fans and, and fanboys or whatnot, then they're not going to, they're going to pretend that they don't understand what is being said, but what I'm saying makes perfect sense. A lot of people want to baby Canelo Alvarez, you know, a lot of people are fans Man fans and fanatical fans. You look at the word fanatical. The root word is fan, you know, and what I do on my channel is I give everybody a fair shake, but I do call anybody out when need be. And that's just what it is. So that being said, Canelo's recently been asked about his plan for a two slash three fight deal with DAZN, right? And the rumored names are, if he gets past Bevel, then he would fight Triple G if Triple G gets past Ryota Murata. And then for a third fight, possibly fight Mockbook Air or fight John Ryder. Again, going back to this legend that I created, no diversity, no American fighters. Even though you have American guys undefeated, Jamal Charlo, undefeated black African-American fighter. You have undefeated black African-American fighter in Demetrius Boo Boo Andrade. And you have a Mexican-American, Ecuadorian, David Benavidez. And these are some of the biggest fights or fights that have been lingering on for years that people have wanted to see. But Canelo flees to the zone and he's trapped on the app and he's fighting a guy he already beat. In addition, another reason why I don't fancy the fight particularly is is a lot has changed since they previously fought. Triple G, you guys see he's scheduled to fight in April against Ryota Murata. For starters, we don't even know how that fight will play out. You know, boxing is not that type of sport where you want to overbook and, you know, sometimes you have to just get past one fight, especially with the way Triple G has been looking because he's fighting April 9th, 2022, 
Look at his last fight. It was in December 18th, 2020. That's like a year and a half, two years. You know what I'm saying? Since he's fought. And he didn't even look good against Camille Sesmeta, who had 21 fights and he got five knockouts. D dang, it looked like he got knocked out again. I didn't even know that. Look. Oh, he fought. Yeah, he fought. That's right. I did know that. He fought Jaime Munguia and got knocked out by him. And Jaime Munguia actually knocked him out around quicker. You see what I'm saying? So, Triple G, we don't even know if he's the same fighter. And he has all this space in between his fights. And Triple G is 40 years old. And he's had an illustrious amateur career. 300 plus fights. That's a lot of wear and tear in your body. You have 40 plus pro fights. You have 300 something amateur fights. And then you haven't fought since 2020 against Camille Sesmeta, a guy with no power. And it took you way longer than normal than like prime triple G to get that guy out of there. And he had nothing to offer. He just kept getting knocked down and stuff. Look, he said he got knocked down once in round one, two, four, and seven. But Triple G just, he couldn't all the way pull the trigger. So I understand why Canelo's doing interviews saying that he thinks he'll knock out Triple G because he waited. He waited and waited and waited. In addition, Triple G only fought one time in 2020. This is a guy, Triple G, had no max, right? Who previously in his prime, he would fight three, maybe four times in a year. Now he's barely even fighting. He's 40 years old, hasn't fought since 2020. And then right before the says meta performance, he fought Dervinchenko. And as I've told you guys, I always thought Dervinchenko beat him and Dervinchenko even hurt him in the first round. Before that, he did have another fight that year with Steve Rolls, an unknown guy. People laughed at the fight and, you know, he was actually getting tagged in some of the early rounds. And Steve Rolls, when he walked out, he looked inexperienced. He looked scared. Like he looked, he looked like he had never been in this type of fight before. And somehow, some way, he got some of the jitters out when it was fight or flight. And he actually was tagging Triple G in some of them early rounds, if you go back and watch it, before he was ultimately knocked out. And then that's when he fought Canelo Alvarez before that in 2018. So you mean to tell me you fought Canelo last in 2018. That's like four years ago. What are we talking about? So that's why I'm saying what I'm saying. Triple G, four years ago, three, four years ago, Triple G's now 40. He's now has all this space in, in terms of inactivity where he was after he looked, look, after he lost to Canelo, he didn't fight. From 2018 to 2019, he took like a long, he took a long little rest. Then he lost to Dervinchenko and then he didn't have no more activity for over a year before the says meta fight. And that was in 2020 and we're now in 2022. It's just not the same fight. Now I got to save the best for last. In addition to everything else that I've outlined as to why I personally don't want to see it. again, Triple G, just to recap, he had a long career, 40 plus pro fights, a bunch of amateur fights. He's not the same fighter. So I wouldn't be surprised if Canelo does knock him out because Canelo waited, you know, and I think that was the goal for Canelo. Another thing is if he's capable of beating Dimitri Bevo at 175, why do I want to see Canelo drop back down to 168? If he, he that, like, let's say he stops Bevo, that means he has two stoppages at 175. So why do I want to, want to see him drop down to 168 where he has all this experience in the heavier weights and he somehow, some way maintained all his power and actually seems to have more power in the higher weight classes and Triple G ain't fought at 168. It's a ripoff. And then they're going to try to try to charge pay-per-view. Look, tell me where Triple G's fighting at 168. 159, 159. Steve Rose catch weight was at 163. 159, 160, 160. So he's he hasn't even fought. Look, I can keep going. 
He when is, has he ever fought at 168? So, you know, that's more Canelo's territory. Canelo's younger, he's fresher. And it, again, if he's capable of beating Bevo, then Triple G, a guy he's already beat in 2018, really stands no chance. But just to expose the how finicky Canelo is and the Canelo man fans, save the best for last. Boom. Bleacher Report. September 27th, which is my brother's birthday. Happy birthday to my brother. 2019. Canelo's stance, and this is he was with the zone. Keep keep this in mind. Canelo Alvarez on a potential third fight with Triple G. Quote: He has nothing to offer. Saul Canelo Alvarez has said he doesn't have any interest in a trilogy fight with Gennady Triple G Golovkin because he believes his two-time opponent has nothing to offer. This is why I do this unpack. I love my job. Canelo and Triple G have been involved in two thrilling controversial contests, yada, yada, yada. However, Canelo appears keen to explore different challengers per DAZN, right? Here is what more of what the Mexican fighter had to say. Why does Canelo want nothing to do with Triple G? Quote, he has nothing to offer me from our exclusive sit down last week. This is your boy Canelo. I think a lot of people are wondering why you did not want to fight Gennady Golovkin in September. It was a fight you could have fought on the 14th then. The zone wanted it, your promoter brought it to you. Why did you not want to face Golovkin? Porque no tiene nada que ofrecerme. Ya le gané dos veces. Eh, la primera para mí pienso que le gané, la segunda también. Este why fight him a third time he's basically coming off a fight against nobody so he has nothing to offer me what do you have to do to have something to offer you man stop playing with me I'm the best in boxing history covering this sport in the digital space he said what, did, what could he do to you know get in your good graces Canelo says, truthfully, nothing. I already beat him twice, so nothing really. I think that's clear. I beat him twice. He has nothing to offer me at the moment. So Canelo is looking real fraudulent. Even if he's fighting for the IBF title against a fighter who won't be a challenge. And that fighter was a challenge because Devercheco beat him. So, bottom line... Canelo in 2019 said that Golovkin has nothing to offer him. I treat this like a court case. Your Honor, Canelo Alvarez Payde, he claimed September 27, 2019, that Triple G had nothing for him. Triple G is irrelevant, and I already beat him twice. On the same network, DAZN. So you tell me why, fast forward a few years... To 2022, three years from then, right? Tell me what he's done since 2019, especially considering the fact that most people who are reasonable believe Sergey Derenchenko beat him after that interview, and he looked bad versus Camille says Meta, and then he's been inactive ever since that, and we don't even know how he's going to look versus Ryota Murata. So please tell me what has changed in the mind of Canelo, the hypocrite Alvarez, that now makes Golovkin a proper suitor for a fight, let alone that same fight on a pay-per-view. Because again, Canelo is a vulture and he's a scavenger, so he waited several years just to make sure that Gennady Golovkin was ripe for the picking and 40 years old and off bad performances while he continued to excel and elevate and he's younger so he can pick Golovkin off and knock him out. That's why Canelo is saying, I want to knock him out. And I do think after I get past Bevel. And then, like I said, DAZN is so foolish as a company, whoever their leadership is, because the, why did you make the Bevel fight first? A lot of people think in 2022, if anything, that Bevel is a tougher fight for Canelo then Triple G in 2022. So if DAZN was actually smart 
and made smart decisions, they would have scrapped the Ryota Murata fight, threw Triple G and, and Canelo in with each other in May, and then just hope for the best. And then if Canelo does what he said he's going to do, knock Golovkin out or beats him decisively, then he moves on to a more in prime guy with a Bevel. And that becomes a be- at least a better storyline. But if Canelo's fighting a guy at 175 and beats him again, what chance does a 40-year-old inactive Triple G have coming off of bad performances where he looks washed and he's clearly not the same fighter? But again, this is how Canelo moves. And he wants he Canelo wanted to gain all the experience in all the higher weight classes while Triple G regressed and is on the decline. So when he did... He wants DAZN to... And Canelo is robbing the bank, man. He's robbing the bank. Because DAZN's footing the bill. And I... Listen. Canelo Bevo is a tougher fight in 2022 than Triple G. If Canelo beats Bevo... I don't even know about Triple G and Murata. He could lose that. Or look suspect for that. And that's going to also hurt Canelo Triple G if, if Triple G doesn't look sensational versus a guy like Ryota Murata, which is not a guarantee. But if they both get past, mark my words, Canelo Triple G 3, it might be more dramatic just because it might be one, more one-sided. But I, I do not look to see Triple G look like, you know, his his past form, you know, his final form. I think it's going to be it's going to be like Brandon Rios versus Mike Alvarado where Alvarado quit versus Ruslan Provotnikov, you know, had run-ins with the law and all kinds of stuff. And by the time they did the third fight, it was nothing like the first two fights. So that's my prediction. We unpack. If you like the video, that's good for you. Subscribe to the channel. You know, Canelo knows what he's doing in terms of um, stringing it along and then trying to collect a huge paycheck. But it's not pay-per-view worthy. Like I said, if anything... I would have reversed the order and fought Triple G first, get that out the way. Nobody really gives Triple G, no one that I've seen in 2022 gives Triple G a shot. Furthermore, I've fully exposed Canelo. He is busted because he said in 2019, Triple G was not worthy of a fight on the same platform. So please explain in the comments section how Triple G, who has been inactive and should have suffered the loss to Dervinchenko, what did he do? where he's magically now all of a sudden he's magically worthy of a fight when Canelo said he had nothing to offer previously. You guys make that make sense. I can't wait to read these comments. And you guys, he said he don't want to fight no trilogy because Triple G can offer him nothing. So what does Triple G offer him in 2022? You know, and then when it comes to other fighters, namely black fighters, but also David Benavidez, Canelo the diva is telling them, That they got to fight each other and earn him and round robin. How come Triple G doesn't have to do that? How come Triple G didn't have to fight Andre? They've been on the zone since 200 BC. Why didn't why didn't Triple G fight Andre or Billy Joe Saunders or Caleb Smith? Why didn't he have to do this this tournament style thing to facilitate and anoint a winner? But you know we we know. Why Canelo's doing it? I'm done. We unpack. Are you tired of your YouTube videos not getting any views? Well, consider TubeBuddy. I've used TubeBuddy for years to scale up my YouTube channel. Now we're sitting over 200,000 subscribers. TubeBuddy is a browser extension that offers a ton of built-in productivity and time-saving services to take your channel to the next level. Use my link in the description to get started with TubeBuddy and level up your channel faster. We work it. The future is now. The Hibernation 5s by Kenichi Bear. Hybrid gaming and lifestyle headphones. Out of the box, you can connect to any console or PC. Bluetooth ready with a low latency USB adapter, color RGB, and extreme bass mode. The Hibernation 5s adjust to you. Whether you need a gaming, travel, gym, or lifestyle headphones, the Hibernations got you covered. The new Hibernation 5s, link in the description. Customize the way you hear the world. Welcome to the nation.